Hello, this is a demo of StealthWatch Response Management Web UI version. This StealthWatch Response Management is available in version 7.3 in the Web UI. Previously, it has been available in StealthWatch Java Client. Um, so, how to reach specifically to the uh, Response Management? You go under Configure and then you click Response Management. Once the Response Manager page is open, you get the title and three options rules actions and syslog formats so basically a response uh, is a set of rules associated with actions and then these actions will trigger once these rules are matched uh, the syslog format is actually used if you need to configure a special syslog formats to be used in certain type of actions so what are the different types of rules that can be applied when you click on the add new rule there is different type of rules, flow collector system alarm, SMC system alarms, exporter interface alarms, host alarms and host compilation alarm and also DDP director alarms. So some of these alarms are associated with devices and system type of alarm. For example, uh, devices like RAID failure uh, alarms for a certain device, management channel alarm for a certain device, licensing alarm for the SMC, for example. The uh, exporter alarm are associated and its interface alarms are associated with alarms related to interface utilization, exporter uh, status information. Uh, but and specifically the host and host group relationship alarms are associated with alarms generated from StealthWatch. So these are the different type of rules you can create uh, that can be uh, associated with actions and then uh, triggered. So what are the type of actions, for example, you can do if you click add new actions, uh, you also get uh, six type of actions, syslog messages, obviously to send a syslog man message to a certain destination, email, if you want to send an email for a certain destination, SNMP trap, also when you, your action is related to sending an SMP trap to a certain destination, ICE ANC policy, which means changing uh, the level of access uh, of a certain device using the ANC available uh, policies with the ICE, which is integrated in this uh, StealthWatch deployment. Webhooks is, is basically calling uh, a webhook uh, from the interface uh, from StealthWatch to a certain uh, exposed webhook. It's calling that URL and threat uh, response incidents is how actually you are sharing these specific alarms or specific uh, rules specifically to threat response or SecureX uh, with, with, if you have SecureX integrated. So now for the syslog formats, obviously these are syslog formats that you can uh, specify and customize if you are using an action that's a syslog message action. Click add new uh, on the right side, uh, you get to specify your syslog format. I can specify my custom syslog format, specify a description. The facility for syslog is going to be used uh, usually most of the most of the station uh, people leave it at the local use or specify a, sp a specific definition if you've got that defined and then the severity uh, the severity is typically also from a, a known when you are sending a syslog message you have to specify what severity uh, this belongs to uh, it depends on the alarm you are, you are trying to generate you can generate different ones uh, you can specify that this is like um, a critical and you can say Cisco stealth watch alarm for example I'm customizing the message uh, you can write your own message and also you can add variable from the message itself like for example you can add the alarm category that has generated uh, has triggered um, and you can also uh, specify uh, add other information like uh, the source IP for example uh, you can also uh, say destination and specify the variable of uh, the destination IP or uh, the IP itself uh, for, for that destination. Uh, so these are the different uh, information you can define uh, and you can also click uh, preview uh, and then you get the information on uh, on how this message will look like. It's not actually sending the syslog like, it's just sending you, giving you an, an information about how the syslog message will look like. And then if you click save, this is gonna be saved and you can use that message uh, from, on, from now on, uh, if you'd like, in different actions. And now, uh, how to create an action. If you click on the action section, you click add new, 
and you specify what type of action. We're gonna take an example of uh, a syslog message as an example. You can uh, specify action uh, send in a syslog message using my custom format. That's a, a long description, but you can specify also your uh, server address where you are gonna send this specific uh, message. And uh, you can specify which message type we're gonna use. This is our new message type, my custom syslog format, or you can use the default format. If this is a custom one, also you can use CEF. Uh, that's specifically for um, for arc site. Uh, if you wanna use uh, the common format uh, C, uh, CEF, uh, which is specified for arc site, you can specify the different information here. You can see in this message. Um, this is basically how to do that i'm going to specify an ip and specify custom message uh, specify the my custom and you can do a test for that action testing the action will mean you are going to send uh, a syslog uh, uh, a syslog message and you can look at it at the server side so uh, i'm gonna cancel this one i've got a, a lot of different uh, actual actual actions that we have created before. Uh, an example, we have used webhooks to send WebEx team messages. Uh, we have an ICE uh, ANC policy. Uh, we have um, sending a, uh, a message to uh, Splunk specifically using webhooks or using syslog messages. And also threat response incident, how you can, sh can share that. Uh, let me shed the light on a couple of those. I'm gonna click on the um, and the share with uh, threat response. So this is basically telling you, uh, you can specify uh, the incident level when you are sending it to uh, CTR or SecureX uh, incident manager. You can specify the level of confidence of that specific alarm from high to medium to low. And also you can sp specify uh, to create the target in SecureX uh, and you can specify if it's gonna use the host detail information or the, the source or target or both of them uh, to be sent uh, to uh, secure X uh, or uh, threat response. So you can also test that action again. I'm gonna click cancel on this one. I'm gonna show also specifically the ICE uh, action. If I click on the ICE action, this is mainly uh, integrating with your ICE uh, integration. So this is quarantine host, apply quarantine policy. This is because on ICE side, we have an ASC policy called quarantine. It could be called anything like block, like uh, remove from network. Uh, this is like, in this case, I have two ICE clusters. For example, if I choose the other one, you change the, uh, depends on the policies that are there. Uh, when I change the ICE cluster, it went there and specifically pulled the uh, the policies. That is ANC investigate, and there is another one with a random name. And you can specify what action you want with that. Quarantine, in this case, for example, with the main one that is only quarantine. And you can apply it to a source or the target host. So why you could apply it for the target host? in case the event is reversed, uh, which means uh, the event is coming from outside to an internal system and you wanna quarantine that specific system. It doesn't have to be quarantine. You maybe wanna uh, restrict access to that system, reduce the type of access, who can access it, maybe re remove access from outside to that system uh, in order to be able to do investigation. I'm gonna cancel this type of action now, uh, just the changes and keep them as, as they are. So now it comes to the rules. To create a rule, you click on the rule section and you specify a new rule. Uh, and then we're gonna, I'm not gonna try all of those. We're gonna go into one example, which is a, a host alarm. So we're gonna specify a new host alarm um, uh, saying that uh, maybe we're gonna look at if um, a certain group of hosts, uh, maybe a local and remote users connect a specific destination. Uh, we wanna generate a specific alarm. So let's say um, uh, remote and local uh, employees uh, and specify CNC uh, alarm. This is the rule. Uh, we can specify rule triggers if, and you can specify uh, the different uh, situation, all or none or any of those uh, below are actually true. And you can start adding blocks of rules. So we're gonna click plus, this is the first block of rule. Gonna take, I'm gonna try to do two of them, so to give an example. If the host group is of source, um, can specify maybe, I'm gonna search for employee, uh, like employee VPN, 
or uh, employee, for example, wireless and wired. So these are remote users and local users. If it belongs to the specific host group, plus uh, you're gonna specify, now I prefer to do all. So it has to be in the host group and it has to have um, a specific type, maybe uh, the type of alarm and gonna specify maybe a couple of them or maybe one of them. In this case, I'm gonna specify uh, the alarms like, um, yeah, button affected host TNC activity. So this is like two, two uh, blocks to have to verify the two rules. And you can also add uh, multiple of those, or you can add also uh, a subsection, and then uh, you can create even nested. So the nested one could be with any uh, in it, and the, uh, the one on top could be all, or you can specify any on the top one, and uh, uh, all on the on the la on the lower one, which means uh, it depends on the levels of, of you wanna try. Maybe you wanna verify this for uh, very specific conditions, so the granularity is really good uh, in this specific uh, type of alarm. And then you can specify the actions. So we have created the actions. Now we can start using those actions. So for this, if there is internal systems that are actually uh, <coughs> employees set an employee wireless or wired connecting to a command and control uh, detected by Stealth Watch, I wanna do the first thing. Maybe I wanna create a ticket using the webhooks. This is gonna create a, a service now ticket. Uh, I wanna also quarantine the host and I wanna send uh, incident to SecureX and also I want to send a message to uh, my, my Splunk using Syslog. So you can turn multiple action on a specific rule. And also once the alarm is classified as inactive, you can also launch a different type of alarms. In this case, um, mainly it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to do an action. Maybe you can uh, also create another ticket to specify that, that this uh, alarm has stopped from being active uh, or um, you can say I'm gonna unquarantine the host uh, if there is an unquarantine policy. So these are the different action that can be run. This is how an example, what is the response manager, uh, what is the actions and the rules and the syslog format and how to use them. Once you save this rule, uh, it's gonna actually be saved and you can use it. In this case, I'm not, not gonna do that. I have a different example here we can look at uh, at a later stage. So this is the introduction to Response Manager with Stealthwatch 7.3 version. Uh, and hopefully this video has been informative for you guys.